This video is all about symbol lists for use with Yahoo data and I've had a lot of questions about where do you get the symbol lists from, how do you uh, use them within the program and uh, so on and so forth. So what I wanted to do is just go through quickly um, the concept behind symbol lists and uh, where you can get them from, how you can enter your own and then how you can update them with data from Yahoo. And I'm using Yahoo here because everybody has access to Yahoo data and it is the default setting when the program is installed. So let's get started with this. First of all, we see that uh, I currently have on the left hand side of the screen, the symbol lists pane. And when the program is first installed, there are no other symbol lists other than the sample data.txt list. And if you use the drop down arrow on the right here, and I drop down to find the collection of symbol lists that are in the system, you'll see that that is the only symbol list that is there. And that the reason for that is it's a sample set of data and it's delivered with the system um, just to get you up and running quickly. It contains 100 symbols and it contains data for those 100 symbols. And so even if you don't have an internet connection and you can't go out and update that data, you can still play around with the data and the program in order to just get started. But it really is just that. It's a sample set of data and it is not really going to be useful for you going forward. And so you will really need to create your own symbol lists or copy them from somewhere else. So the first thing is you probably noticed that the symbol list actually has a file extension. So it's called sample data.txt. Now that obviously relates to the name of a file on your Windows file system. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, I'm going to open up now the lo location where the symbol lists are on the file system to give you, uh, to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So now I'm looking at uh, my file system and I am using Windows 8, but you could be using Windows 7 or you could be using Windows XP. And what you'll see in here, look at the path that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the um, documents directory and then underneath that directory there's a, a folder called edrator and then underneath that there's a folder called symbol lists. I'm looking at the contents of my symbol lists folder now and in there you'll see there is one file called sample data.txt. It matches exactly with what is shown in the left hand pane. So basically if ever I add a text file to this folder it will then appear in this drop down and I will be able to select it within the program. So um, fundamentally you can think of it as the goal is to get a text file into that directory so that you can then start using it and manipulating it within the program. And there are several ways to do that. Now what does the text file contain? Um, let's quickly open this up and I'm, I have a text editor called TextPad. You probably um, have something else. Uh, the default text editor on a Windows system is Notepad. But if you open it up in any text application, you'll find that the symbols are arranged one symbol per line, the symbol itself, and this is the actual symbol that is used with the Yahoo data. So, for instance, Activision, ATVI is the symbol. That's the symbol that Yahoo knows and that you need to make a request, not you personally, but the software needs to make a request using ATVI as the symbol in order to get that data from Yahoo. So the symbol is very important and it should be very specific to the data provider that you're using. Um, this video is all about Yahoo data, so we're not going to be talking about um, any of the other data providers, but there are certain cases, just so you know, where a certain security is identified by different symbols from different data providers. Um, just bear that in mind if you uh, if you run into uh, some issues, uh, that might be one reason for uh, a problem. But anyway, the symbol lists we're going to be talking about are all Yahoo symbol lists. And you can see in this, this text file, it's basically just a list of symbols and then a comma and then a description of that symbol. The description isn't so important, it's really just so that when you're within the program and you're looking at a chart, of that symbol, it can then uh, let you know what the symbol is. And so I could have changed, you know, the name here could be um, Activision Blizzard Inc. or it could be XYZ Inc. It doesn't really affect the way that the data is fetched from uh, from Yahoo. Okay, so um, you'll also notice then in this folder, there's another subfolder called Yahoo. And 
if we click on this folder and we we drill down into the the folder hierarchy uh, underneath yahoo there's a folder called synchronized underneath synchronized there is uh, a folder for um, well there's 28 folders representing 28 different countries so if we we'll, i'm going to take an example of the usa uh, if i open up the usa country folder then i see a bunch of other subfolders in here and let's take a look at the nasdaq 100 folder if i open that up then there's a file in here called nasdaq100.txt and i can open this up in a text editor too and we'll see in here that this contains symbols let me just bring that into view for the nasdaq 100 um, and these symbols are relevant to Yahoo because they were found underneath the Yahoo uh, folder. Okay, so that is uh, that's a symbol list for the Nasdaq 100, but it doesn't currently appear in the dropdown within the program within EdgeRater. Uh, the reason for that is it's not in the root uh, directory, the root symbol list folder. So if you wanted to use the Nasdaq 100 within your um, explorations and, and generate to generate signals. Uh, from the nasdaq 100 then you would need to copy this file nasdaq 100.txt into the root symbol lists folder so i'm just going to do that right now okay so i've arranged uh two file explorer windows on on my screen just so that it's easy to show but you could do this using any other copy mechanism within uh, within windows but uh, uh, one way that's very clear is to open up two file explorer windows one on the symbol lists directory and one in the um, directory that you want to copy from and then you can just simply drag and drop it over into the root symbol lists folder so I'm now going to copy that into symbol lists and you see now that nasdaq 100.txt is now also in this symbol lists folder in addition to sample data.txt now how has that affected the program let's go back into um, edge Rater. and now if I use the drop down arrow you'll see that there's a there is a symbol list called nasdaq100.txt. Now, if I select this list, you'll see that the data area is empty, meaning that there's no data associated with this list. Even though the list contains symbols, there has been no data downloaded from the data provider and put into the data snapshot. So that would be the next step. And you could, in order to do that, you could just press the end of day update button and it would go to whatever the default data provider is um, on the system and it would download data from there. Now your default data provider look under the home area of the menu under data providers and then look for the data provider that has the check mark next to it and in my case Yahoo has the check mark next to it which means that when I create a brand new list in the system the data is automatically going to be fetched from that data provider. So I could Knowing that I have that as my default provider, just press end of day update. But I like to press the edit button because I get to see a lot more about the data. Um, what I'm looking at here, as soon as I press the edit button, it is I'm in the symbol list dialog. I can see a list of all of the symbols, all of the descriptions of those symbols. So that data all comes from the text file. It also tells me where the data is going to come from. In this case, it's coming from Yahoo. Now, on an individual list basis, I could go and select different providers for different lists, but I'm going to keep this one set to Yahoo. I can also set the data update options. So if I want to, by default, there's two years worth of data is going to be uh, fetched when you do a data update, but I could change that to a specific date range. I'm going to leave that set as two years. And then uh, what I can tell in the data snapshot tab is that my list contains symbols. I can see the symbols here, but there's no snapshot data. No data has been downloaded from the data provider yet. So as soon as I press the update data button, which I'm going to do right now, the system is going to request the data from the data provider that is set over here, remember? And it's so it's going out to Yahoo and it's requesting that data. It's building this snapshot. Now, when it's finished, it's going to populate the summary information into this dialog. So the snapshot data, it's telling me now for each of the symbols contains data from September the 8th, 2011 to September the 6th, 2013. So that is the latest end of day data. And the area in the middle here, uh, the contained in columns are useful if you want to make sure that you have data for every symbol 
that is in your list. So remember before I said that uh, some data providers have different symbols. So for instance, if you had typed in a symbol that wasn't applicable for Yahoo, then that symbol would be contained in the list, but it would not have been contained in the snapshot. It wouldn't have been able to have been downloaded from Yahoo and put into the snapshot. So there would not be a check mark against that. So this dialog is a very good way to see that you are actually getting the data that you think you're getting. Um, and also when I scroll through here, you can see there's one other thing that uh, comes uh, comes up because it's different to all the rest, is that NWSA, News Corporation, has data from June the 19th, 2013 to September the 6th. So it doesn't have data all the way back to uh, September the 8th, 2011. That could be important when you're doing backtesting because you know you might think you're doing two years worth of backtesting, but this particular symbol doesn't have that much data. When the request was made from Yahoo to get that data, it didn't have all of the data that was requested. And there could be several reasons for that. It could be an IPO, uh, symbol could have changed, there could have been some merge um, going on, but um, this will tell you how much data you actually have, so it's useful to see. And if you wanted to sort by any one of these columns, you can click on the column header and then it will show me, so if I scroll to the top now, that symbol NWSA is the only one that doesn't have a full set of, of uh, two years worth of data. Okay, so once I've hit the update data button, I've downloaded my end of day data, built my snapshot, and I close this dialog down, then on the left hand side in the, this pane, the symbol list pane on the left hand side, uh, we'll see those symbols and we'll see the two dates and we'll see that it's end of day data. If I go back now to select sample data.txt, we'll see that the dates on there have not been changed. The data that I just downloaded was only downloaded for that particular symbol list and is only associated with that symbol list. So if I go and select back NASDAQ 100, we see that we have through to 9-6-2013 as expected. And now what I want to do is just, uh, uh, this would be how you would use the symbol list once you've got it. I'm actually looking at the Morales and Catcher signals template. So um, to run a template, you, you basically select the template, you select a symbol list to run against that template, and then you just hit the run button. So it's going to go through that list and it's going to run uh, against the data. Um, that's in the list and it's going to run against the strategies and signals that are configured within the template and we can see then the various uh, signals that come up. We've got various pocket pivots that have occurred in these symbols and we see that one of the symbols has a buyable gap up and then we also see the uh, the seven week rule indicators, the days clear of moving average 10 and days clear of moving average, average 50 and so on and uh, you'll know all about that if you've if you've read that book but uh, this template will give you then signals based on the formulas that are contained within that book. So that's how you use a symbol list once it's full of data, once you've populated it with data, you can then use that with any of the templates that are in the system. And this list of templates is growing every month. Okay, so if, if all you want to do is run various lists against templates, then this is obviously a very simple way to do it. So there we go. Now we've got two lists in the system. Um, we can update them on a, every day. We can just come in here and, and select the list and then, and then press update. If I wanted to add another list, obviously I can do the same thing. I can put a text file into that particular folder or I could create a brand new list within the program itself. This is a, a more um, a time consuming way of doing it. If you've got a list of say 500 symbols, then you could of course come into this dialog here and start typing in the symbol name and description for all 500, but that could take uh, quite a while to do. The other option would be if you've got that symbol list from somewhere on the on the internet and you can get it into a text file, then you create a text file and you put it in the directory uh, that um, we just talked about and then it would appear in here. So several ways to do that. The other way is that in the forum on edgerator.com there's a a symbol lists uh, topic and people can post their own symbol lists uh, of you know potentially just watch lists or lists of uh, of symbols from exchanges that uh, that are re relevant in some way people can post on there and then anybody can download those lists um, as zip files unzip the file and then put the txt file that's contained in that list uh, into the symbol lists folder so several ways to get um, 
data from symbol lists into the program. So that's it for this video and thanks for watching.